wife cheated, and left me for her friend four years ago. Now, wants me back because he dumped her. I, 59 male, was cheated on and divorced by my ex-wife, Lucy, 49 female. Four years ago, we were married for 12 years, with two children who are now 14 and 11. Lucy was my second wife. My first marriage was with my school darling, whom I lost in an accident. Yeah, my love, life has been difficult. There were not once, but multiple dark patches in my life. But entering my 60s with so much gratitude and grace, I was able to sail through all this. I run a modest real estate business. After the demise of my first wife, I was devastated. I had no kids with her, meaning I had nothing to hold on to in life. I was in my early 40s. Then, no clue what to do with my life. I went heavy into drinking and stuff like that. Then, I met Lucy at a bar. She was nursing a heartbreak with her college buddy. And we clicked. I won't lie. I was pathetic. I needed a shoulder to cry on and got emotionally attached to Lucy. In a very short period, we dated for a year. And she proposed to me for a marriage. Marriage. I don't remember if I was ready for marriage. But Lucy wanted a commitment. So, I gave in without thinking too much. She was in her early 30s and wanted to settle down. In fact, she broke up with her friend because of issues. They were friends with benefits. She had feelings for him, but he didn't reciprocate that. After years of physical relationship, she gave up and moved on from him. So, when she made her stand clear to me that she wanted a marriage or nothing, I couldn't take this chance of losing her and got married at a closed ceremony. I don't know if I was a loser, but at that point in time, it made sense, to be honest. I don't regret it. I had a good life with Lucy. We traveled a lot. Few were children. And even after having children, not to mention the two beautiful children, we had together. We had a stable marriage with two kids for 12 years until her friend, a fair partner, made an entry into our life. Lucy bounced back to him and divorced me. I kept custody of the kids and have been living my life around my children. Now, the reason I write this, Lucy popped up unexpectedly last week. And now, she wants to be a part of her life. When I saw her standing at the door for a moment, I didn't recognize her. She looked so pale and miserable, puffy red eyes, as if she hadn't slept for a while. She broke down. On seeing me, I let her died. Actually, I thought something terrible happened to a fair partner. She hugged me and cried. When I asked her if everything was okay, she kept saying, sorry and apologizing for leaving me. The kids were on their summer camp, and I was alone at home. When she calmed down, she told me a fair partner had abandoned her and went back to his native country, in the south of Europe. He just left a note, which said, I'm sorry, I can't marry you, I have a wife and children at home. That was heartbreaking, he had been living a dual life, exploiting Lucy's feelings. He kept her hanging for four years, did marry her and instead abandoned her. I don't know if I should feel happy or sad about the whole thing. Karma did play a part, but I didn't say any of those hurtful things. I was feeling sorry for her, but there's nothing I could do for her. She said, I was her only hope and had come back to me, because she knew, I would forgive her and take her back. I said I had moved on from her, though, I don't hold any harsh feelings for her. I cannot let her walk over me again. I had forgiven her for cheating on me once, but she did that again. She was so madly in love with a fair partner that she didn't think twice about leaving her children for him. She remained loyal to me for 12 years, only because a fair partner was out of the country. She came back, now, only because a fair partner left her. I told her, I empathized with her but cannot trust her again. She started sobbing again, and begged for forgiveness. I told her that I had forgiven her, and the best I can do is let her have joint custody of her children. If the kids are okay, with that, she was not ready to leave at all. I had to be rude in order to get rid of her. I said I had to step out and she needed to leave though. She left. I'm feeling very disturbed with her coming back in her life. I've had enough drama in my life, and now, all I want is a peaceful life. Honestly, even letting her have joint custody of your kids is a stretch. She very obviously doesn't care about them. So, why would you allow her back into their lives if she'll just take off again? At the very sight of this affair, partner of hers, is it really worth it? Our married life was smooth for 12 years. Our problem started when Lucy's long-lost love came back to her life. He was the same guy with whom she had broken up due to commitment issues. He went back to his country after their breakup. And now he is back in the city. And Lucy couldn't stop seeing him. Initially, I didn't mind when he occasionally visited us. She said, she had moved on. I believed it. We had been married for 12 years with two kids, and in those years, she had been a good wife and a great mother. She had never shown any red flags. I didn't suspect her unnecessarily. One day she came home and locked herself in the room. The children and I knocked on the door several times for dinner, but she didn't answer. I called on her phone to check if everything was fine. She texted that she was fine, but needed some more time alone. I didn't bother her and slept in the living room. The next day, she tried to be normal, but it was evident that she was not. I asked her, what was wrong? She said she had a fight with her sister, but nothing serious, and she would deal with it. She didn't want to share the details, and I didn't insist. I didn't try to find the details from her sister, because I don't 
like meddling in their private matters. She knew that trait about me, and maybe that's why she lied and made the stuff about her sister. I took her words to be true, but as the days passed, I realized it was not about her sister. It's about her friend. Until then, she was also chirpy, talking about her friend and making plans to invite him over for dinner and drinks. But all of a sudden, after that evening, she stopped talking about him. I tried asking about him, but she ignored any conversation around him. Also, Lucy had many fights with her sister before, but she was never this disturbed and upset. So, yes, it was my assumption, but it turned out to be true instead of spying on her and finding evidence. I confronted her, if she had cheated on me, with her friend, and gladly, she accepted. Instead of gaslighting the situation, and denying it, she confessed, that when a fair partner returned back, she couldn't stop herself from meeting him. It started with friendly meets at public places, then catching up at his place, which reignited the stuff between them. I asked her if she still loved him. She said, no. She pleaded with me for a chance. She said she got carried away. At that moment, it had happened once. And she said she was guilty of her actions, and it was killing her. From inside, she had stopped seeing a fair partner after that evening. She said she loved him when they were together, but he never respected her feelings and used her physically. She broke down and made promises of never betraying me again. Now, now, whatever you call me, I fell for her. I was deeply hurt, but I wanted to save my marriage for the sake of my children. The younger one was barely four. Then, divorce meant separation from my children, and I couldn't fathom that you could say. I was weak for not taking that severe step. I forgave her, and gave another chance to my marriage. I made it clear that if she ever betrays me, that would be it. And cheating doesn't only mean sexual relationships. I won't forgive her, even if it's just emotional. She agreed. We rebuilt our relationship and went on date. Nights and vacations. It went smoothly for a few months until I got suspicious again. This time I didn't let the red flag slide. She had cheated on me once. And this time I was super cautious. It was like four years ago. So I don't remember the details accurately. But overall, it was the stuff. She remained absent-minded. Didn't give enough time to me. And the children used to be in a bad mood at home. But smiled while texting and giggled. While talking to others on the phone, she was always hooked onto her phone, and she avoided me in bed. She was never in a mood this time. Again, I confronted her head straight, but she didn't admit anything was wrong. She indeed, played defensive, and tried to gaslight the situation by making it about me. She blamed me for not trusting her. She played the victim that I was constantly keeping an eye on her, because she had cheated once, and all that. I tried to defend myself, but realized it was futile. So, I did, what everyone does in this situation. Look for evidence to expose her. I snooped into her phone and found she had not changed the password, which meant there was nothing in the phone. There were chats with a fair partner, but it was normal conversation from months ago of the time that she had first cheated on me. I couldn't find anything on her phone. I was thinking of other means to find the cheating. But before that, she confessed. She got to know that I checked her phone. She said that if I was doubting her, I would eventually uncover the truth. So better. She comes clean. She said she tried to distance herself after the first confrontation but he begged her to return. She avoided him, fearing trouble in our relationship. But this time, he assured he loved her and would marry her, but needed some time to sort out some stuff. So, they kept it under the carpet. She said she was guilty of cheating on me, but couldn't leave the opportunity to be with the affair partner. I understood she never stopped loving him, but only suppressed her feelings because of his commitment issues. Now that affair partner was serious about her, she couldn't resist. She asked for divorce, and I wanted custody of my children. I felt she also wanted to get rid of the children, because she immediately agreed and requested me to let her meet them weekly. I nodded, but she had to break that snooze to the children, and she could use any reason she wanted, but it shouldn't show me in any negative light. She told the children that we were divorcing, because we fell out of love. It was difficult for them. We went through a lot of tears and pleadings from the children to reconcile their cries did make me bitter towards her, but eventually I realized that even if she changed her mind about divorce, I couldn't forgive her this time. So, divorce was the best option for us. I promised the children, I would prove to be a good father. They didn't doubt that I've always been an involved parent, not like the one who just shows up. It was not difficult for me to take up. My full-time role was a single parent. Yet, children missed their mom. Our divorce was settled amicably. I was hurt, but somehow didn't carry a grudge. Called me a coward, or maybe I acted mature because of my age. But I let her go. The next few months were terribly difficult, especially with the younger one. I took them on multiple vacations, mini trips, picnics and whatnot. Did everything to keep them happy. Lucy came to meet them once a week, but then she settled with a fair partner in Alabama. By then, the children had moved on, and so did I. In the last four years, the children have grown to be kind, resilient, and emotionally strong. Lucy used to call them. After moving out from here, initially, 
the children used to hang up on her and despise her, but with time, they became forgiving and understanding, they're now cordial with her. As for the current situation, when my children came back from their summer camp and got to know about their mother, they were not so sorry for her. They were, like, she chose that for herself. I tell you, these young generation kids, they freaked out when I told them about my proposal of joint custody. They refused to see her or live with her. I calmed them down, that nothing would be finalized until they approved. It's ultimately their decision. They don't want to go away from me. And they say, M.O.M. would abandon us again if that guy pops back. I know they're right. I really don't know what charm a fair partner has that. She keeps bouncing back to him, even after several betrayals. If she was capable of cheating the first time, without showing any signs of red flags, then she was more than capable of doing it again. She was obviously hung up on this guy for quite some time. And even though he was out of sight, he most definitely wasn't out of mind after finding out your partner is cheating. It seems only fair to be able to ask questions and seem suspicious. A cheater who gets defensive about random questions is only defensive because they have something to hide. I don't know what that means. But, yeah, I'm definitely an old school guy. Quite literally, though. Remember, I'm 59. We don't hunt down women and scorch them down. If they stop loving us, we let her go. However, this doesn't mean we let them walk all over us. We draw that line too. No bad feelings for negative comments. But yeah. Just wanted to clarify things on behalf of all the old school men. So, Lucy came back again, this time. The kids were at home. They flipped out on seeing her. I asked them to be well behaved. They spoke to her for some time, and then pushed off to their room. Lucy asked me. If I had given a thought about reconciliation, I said, reconciliation is not on the table for sure. And also, the children don't want to stay with her, but I'm okay. If she could convince them, I don't want to speculate, but I feel she doesn't want children either. She said. She cannot afford to have the children with her. She had been living on an old friend's couch. Who could ask her to move out? At any moment, I knew her finances were poor, but I had no idea that it would be so severe before marrying me. She used to work as a receptionist. She left the job. Shortly after her marriage, I tried my best to provide her with a good life. During our divorce, she was compensated fairly. I asked her what she did with that money. She gave it to a fair partner to help him with his business. Not only that, she had to take up two jobs to run their kitchen in Alabama. Despite all this, a fair partner left her. He took all their savings while leaving only the money she had kept away from. A fair partner's knowledge was there with her. She used that to travel back and had been surviving on that. I offered to lend her some money to rent a condo and get her life together. But she denied it. She said, she always sought love and not money. And if money was that important, she wouldn't have left. Stable life with me, for broke a fair partner. She wanted to live with us, like a family, but that was not possible. Sometimes I do feel bad for her, but we don't have space for her in our lives. I gave her a check and asked her to rent a house and get a job, and also seek therapy. She badly needs one. I have requested my kids to be kind to their mom. After all, she birthed them. They are gentle to her now, but they refuse to have her back in their lives. Sometimes. Lucy texted me, asking if she deserved all the hate she had been getting. I don't know what to say, but she had definitely wronged me. And the children, you absolutely went above and beyond what she deserved. I think, by giving her a check, you were in a way, letting her walk all over you. She dug her grave. Now, she can lie in it, or dig herself out by herself. I think, around one and a half to two years back before Lucy came back into our life, I met this woman, call her Jay. She's 62. She runs a flower boutique and is as active as a 30-year-old. We were just friends for a while, but after a year of knowing her, I liked her company. I usually spend my evenings and weekends at her shop, helping her with the errands. I love the way she has been handling things independently. She lost her husband. Quite early, raised three kids as a single mom. And now, when the children have moved out, she's been selling flowers to sustain her livelihood. I feel so lively around her. I didn't mention Jay on this thread, or to Lucy, because then it would be like, I'm not reconciling with Lucy because of Jay. It's nothing like that, I don't intend to marry Jay or something. We are just two oldies in our 60s. Trying to enjoy the last leg of our lives without any BS, my children know about her. And they're happy that I have someone to share my feelings with. My elder one is moving out of high school this year, and soon, the younger one would also move out for high school or college. I'm not emotionally dependent on Jay, but I think having someone, at least a friend to share your thoughts at this age is precious. I had told Jay about Lucy's visit, and she reacted empathetically to the entire stuff. However, this didn't go well with Lucy. One day she saw me at Jay's shop and spied on me for the entire evening. I didn't notice it with our body language. She understood that I was dating Jay. I think she followed us, and that's how she saw me visiting Jay's place in the evening and spending my nights there. One day when I was leaving Jay's place, 
Lucy charged at me saying, Oh, is this the who is keeping you away from me? I was shocked at her language. How could she say that? I tried to calm her down, but she crossed her limits, and I gave it back to her. She cheated on me twice, abandoned her children, and now has the audacity to pop up, asking me to take her back, while... In my case, there's no cheating involved yet. She called me names and abused Jay. I told her, never to show her face again. She was a selfish woman, and she has always thought only about herself. She left after that. But a few days later, Jay's shop was vandalized with a note, leave him. It was a no-brainer. To guess it was Lucy, there was no camera installed in her shop yet, I insisted. Jay lodged a complaint against Lucy. Based on the last incident, Jay was reluctant to go into legal battles, but I didn't let it slide. I called Lucy and asked her to come home. I berated her in front of the children and threatened her with the police case, if she ever troubled us. Or Jay, I didn't want to do this in front of the children, but she called the children to apparently expose me. Obviously, the children sided with me and unleashed their suppressed anger. She was the one who had ruined my kid's childhood, and now she was acting all victim and blaming me for our shambled marriage. It's been a month or so since all this Lucy did not appear in our life. Again, the kids, and I apologized to Jay for Lucy's tantrums and helped her set up her shop back in shape. The kids insist that I marry Jay before they leave for college, but I don't want to be married again, neither Jay wants, though. We love each other. I'm yet to say these words to her. I don't want to get into this marriage crap. Again, I don't think it's for me. I'm happy being father of two children and Jay's boyfriend. This is exactly why you don't enable the people who wrong you. Because in some way they twist things around and think they have a chance with you, which they shouldn't. She didn't deserve your time or energy in the first place.